Hello and welcome to What's New in NX85, a webinar by Sherpa Design Applied CAX. My name is Matt Martin. First I'm going to cover what's going to be new in there as far as the shortcut toolbar, how to customize that shortcut toolbar, the fact that the dialog rail is now gone, you've got a less and more command in your dialogs and how they look, and there's new simple measurements. So let's get going. First thing you're going to notice is a shortcut toolbar when I select on a feature in my off the screen, off the graphic screen here. I built a, a custom one in the, in the uh, view area, the graphics area, and of course there's also the, the uh, right click menu. So let's customize a shortcut toolbar real quick. If you're into customizing toolbars, you're in heaven here. So you see here that this shows features revolve, and then I switched it to face. And now I'm going to switch this to an edge. And by default, there's an edge blend on there, but I can also put on a chamfer. So I'm going to throw a chamfer onto that quick, that uh, shortcut toolbar. Now when I pick that edge, chamfer pops up. Key in the value, and I'm done. This will help minimize screen movement, picks, and whatnot on on your in in your NX session. Analysis, simple diameter, simple measurements here. As you can see, I'm just picking the geometry on the screen. Measure a simple distance, it's just going to pick face to face. You'll see on there, there's also diameter, but I picked the radius on this one. The first pick was on diameter. There's also a pretty cool new tool called Measure Extremes. I'm also going to show off some uh, preview functionality, how to control that. The new tool Measure Extremes under Analysis Measure Extremes. First thing I'm going to do is do a, a, a 2D bounding radius. Be careful with this one because if you pick everything on the screen, you may as well go to lunch because it's going to take a while. It's going to circumscribe a circle around the geometry that you pick on the screen, and it has to be 2D coplanar objects. So it has its, has its place. It is pretty cool. As you can see there, that there, there is a center point that's dynamically updating based on the, what I'm picking on the screen. And there's the center point. You can also make it associative. And by doing so, I can create an ad hoc requirement for that measurement. The next one I want to do under measure extremes is 2D polar radius. So I want to pick a point. and then pick the geometry I also have to put in a vector here and it's going to automatically circumscribe a circle around from the point that I picked to the geometry that I picked I'm showing a couple different ways of how this is working select and unselect different curves in, in space on there and it will adjust what it's circumscribing so again, under Analysis, Measure Extremes, I'm going to switch this to a minimum-maximum calculation. Minimum, maximum. Nice. Pops back and forth. 3D Extreme Point. This is really cool. So I'm going to pick my spline here, give it a vector, it automatically starts throwing in an extreme point based on the vector that I picked. And of course I can flip the vectors back and forth. My spline here is only a 2D spline. So I'm only going to put in an X and a Y. I have an associative point 
at the end of my spline. So I'm going to adjust my spline and show how this associative point is going to change. And there's my new associative point has adjusted itself. Of course, the dialog box is hanging off the screen here. And that's it for Measure Extremes. So as I place on new geometry in a part, see-through preview gives me a preview that's see-through on the part. It's a behavior that can be changed, and I'll show that here in a minute. I'm going to switch the part here to uh, an assembly. Make this my work part. Come down here to work part. And the rest of the assembly components will turn translucent. If I go to Preferences Visualization, I can uncheck see-through work part and turn that behavior off essentially. And again, since I turned off see-through preview on the on the part itself, I'm going to turn it back on here on the emphasis tab. See-through preview turned on. When I double click on it, I can see through the part. Here I'm going to cover some new things in smooth edges, the rotate enhancements, uh, uh, the way to fit, and well, that's about it. So under preferences visualization, if I look at my edge display settings, go ahead and close that one up there. I'm going to change the color of it. This is for smooth edges. This is a new thing. Make a nice thin dashed line in red and put that on there and you'll see how the smooth edges all update. I go into a wireframe kind of mode. I can see that they, they're, they're changing. And that's pretty much it. The rotate enhancements are really good. You'll see a dynamic rotation point show up in the in the part file. And I've got the part clear to the left hand side of the screen and I'm going to rotate it. And it's still just rotating about the centroid of that part. It's no longer throwing it around on the screen. If I have extra geometry on the screen, it dynamically picks a point in between them if, there, if it's visible when I start to, to uh, rotate and as I zoom in it's adjusting automatically. I can also exclude datums from fit so the datum plane is off to the right here. If I go to fit my screen that datum is now excluded from fit. Okay, set rotation reference has replaced set rotation point now I'm able to pick an edge, which will give me a vector. So I get an axis of rotation for my part. And I can start rotating about that axis of rotation. If you switch it to space ball rotation here, it gets kind of strange as far as controlling it. And of course I can right click and clear rotation reference. Next thing is import points from file. This has been asked for for quite a while, I do believe. I've seen plenty of journals and grip files that will do this for you. But now it's just part of the stock import dialog. So file, import, points from file. You're able to pick a few different file extensions. And of course you can pick all files. As long as it's in an XYZ format, it'll import the points. This tells me that there's more than a thousand points and it may limit my uh, uh, abilities here. This one brought in 6,002 points pretty much instantaneously, so it comes in pretty quickly. Just to show off how fast this thing is, I'm going to import over 62,000 points here. This is some GIS LiDAR data that I got quite a while ago of a local mountain range. And I believe it's 63,372 points imported pretty quickly. And one last one for fun. I've got some scan data for a bone. I'll import the scan data.
there's the bone. Pretty cool. Import points from file. Sketcher. Sketcher has a lot of changes happening to it. The uh, visualization is better. You can see the center points of circles and arcs. There's a new workflow for placing geometric constraints. So that's something to watch out for. My muscle memory still sends me back to the way I did it in NX8. So it, it does take a little while to get used to. You've got better visualization of over constrained, under constrained, unresolved geometry and of course a new look to all the different sketch constraints. The ability to type in a value and it sticks and some more inferred constraints with the, uh, the center point rectangle style of creation. So let's get on it. First thing you'll notice is you have the center points of, the cir of circles and arcs. You no longer have to sneak up on it to activate the center point. It's just a, a point that's there. I'm going to click on MB1 and show you the, the shortcut toolbar that you get for that off of a piece of geometry. Same thing with MB1 on a dimension. I get a shortcut toolbar that pops up. If I right click on a piece of geometry, I still get the shortcut toolbar, but I also get a right click menu. And again with a dimension, right click and I get the shortcut menu plus the MB3 menu. I can change my uh, the, the size of my constraints on the screen, bump that up to a 6. You can make your constraints gigantic, make them easier to see, and kick them back to normal. The new constraint workflow, the MB1 on one piece of geometry and again on another one. And then I select the constraint that I want to put on it. Again, MB1, first piece, second piece, and I can click tangent there. If I want to click on my geometric constraints first, I explicitly have to select the geometric constraint and then select the geometry that I want. It's no longer going to dime. Uh, uh, dynamically update for you and tell you what you can pick. So here we go. I'm going to place a equal length constraint. Make sure I picked the right one here. On those two lines and the equal length constraint has been created. If you over constrain a sketch it should get a little bit easier on being able to dissect what exactly is over constrained. Overconstrained will turn to the overconstrained color, and in my session it's it's red, and unre <clears throat> unresolved is gray. If you use the rectangle command, which I use quite often, and use it from the center point, when you pick something as the center point and drop it in, midpoint constraints are automatically created. It can be a time saver. Okay, in our last slide today, we're going to get into some modeling. I'll show off Unite with Regions and some new selection intent for edge blend and drafting. So Unite with Regions. This is a very cool enhancement. I'm going to go ahead and unite this plastic part here. Select my target body and select all my tools, just like I would have done normally. But before, I would have had to do a lot more work before I started adding this, these, uh, these bodies in. So here I can remove defined regions or keep defined regions. So I want to select remove and this application seems to be easier. I grab this, these bits of geometry that are hanging off the part. You can see down the preview what it's going to try and remove. And of course of the geometry I would have to build it anticipating using this tool and say OK and in one operation I've taken care of a lot of geometry it's a very very cool tool
I have a extreme plastic part here with lots of ribbing in it and I want to be able to just in one operation in one pick rather blend all those top faces and now I can so in just one pick I was able to pick all of those top faces there's also another one in here that you'll notice called outer edge faces outer faces outer edges of faces excuse me and you can see that the outer edge of the face is also picked again just a single button click and I've grabbed all of those outer edge faces the selection is also available in draft if I pick from edges I can pick the top or the rib top faces key and a value to show you that it's really happening here and I say okay to that and I'm going to do another edge blend on the rib top faces I, don't know, I guess just just to show off and it's just a single button click now it's very cool well that's it for part one thank you for joining me for what's new in NX85 Part 1, Sherpa Design and Applied CIX. Stay tuned for Part 2.